Um, I want, before I get started, I want to say, who's, who's the techie folks in the room? And you want me to talk about like cross-site scripting and SQL injection and all that. Okay, okay, you guys are going to help me when there's like hard questions, because it's been a long time since I've done really technical stuff. So who's, who's the other guys? Who's, a, who's like a, a, you know, an educator or a staff member or somebody who got told, you're now in charge of the WordPress site? <laughs> okay. You guys are who this is mainly for, because my tech folks, these guys are who we always call the weakest link, right? <laughs> yeah. But we don't want them to be, because they can be our strongest asset. They can be part of what keeps us all secure. So somebody in your university decided it was a good idea to have WordPress, right? For, and it is, because WordPress is cool. <laughs> but... There's a really actually a lot to it. Am, am I right? Who, who, who got volunteered or, or the opportunity to excel to do the WordPress site? Because they said it'd be easy. It's easy, right? It, it is. It can be easy to use. But there's a lot of pieces to it. So you got now you got pages and posts and dashboards and you look at the videos and you're putting all this together and you're on a roll and now somebody's telling you security. Upset. Who's who's responsible for security? Everyone. Yeah. Who? So, IT, right? That's what you say. Well, wait. I, I, IT does that. Not necessarily. And that's why I'm saying, you know, we got to all be responsible. Like you said, Paul, in your thing today, everybody's got a part to play. And I'm not going to tell you it's easy because there is not an easy button for it. But before you leave out here today, hopefully you'll know a little bit about why it's important and some of the things you can do to secure your WordPress site. Why it matters, a framework that you can use to help to do that. And I always have to do three fundamentals that I teach to small businesses and to personal people that I think everybody needs to do. So I want, I want you to take those away with you as well. As you said, I'm Stacy Clements. I am a small business owner. I spent a lot of time in the Air Force. Um, my boss called me the fixer, the problem solver, and the pit bull. So that's what I do. I fix stuff, I solve problems, and I sink my teeth into things like those three cybersecurity fundamentals we're going to talk about at the end. I have a little picture up here because this picture reminds me that even when you're comfortable in your job and you think you know what your job is and it's somebody else's job to do the other thing, that you might end up somewhere that you didn't expect and have to learn something that you didn't know about. Is You heard I was in the Air Force and that, that's not an airplane. On that photo. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, when you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and suddenly you're responsible for a port if you want to survive because you're in the Arctic, you learn what to do. So... That's the kind of same kind of thing that security is. You got thrown into something, learning a bunch about it, and now you'll learn something or to keep us all safe. Uh, we already talked about the questions, so I won't go into that. But yeah, if you got a question, holler at me, or uh, if you're if you're out there in the live stream, put it on the put it on the website. All right. So why should you care? And if you were in the call session this morning, this will be easy. Um, pop quiz at the end, but you already got the answers from him. What do you got in the university? The university is a treasure chest. You got lots of personal information and intellectual property, sensitive data. There was something uh, recently, uh, uh, some hackers trying to get into universities because there was Navy data that they wanted to get to. National security interest out there. Um, a lot of bandwidth, a lot of computers. I remember when I worked at Wright Pat, we had uh, connections with labs. I mean, huge pipes. This was back in the uh, in the 90s, and that's where the computing power was. So we call those assets, right? The treasure. When you got treasure, who wants it? Bad guys, pirates, right? And they use ways to get it. Things you might have heard of: phishing and ransomware, denial of service. They may want to use your, your computing power so you can't use it. Um, insider attacks or insider accidents. I accidentally deleted the entire website because that never happens. And what do we call those? We call those threats, right? And then we have the ways 
to get the assets. What do the bad guys do? Well, they take advantage of technical problems, technical changes, software changes, technology changes. Got to keep it up to date. Misconfigurations or maybe just not changing default configurations. Uneducated users are just not paying attention. Maybe your WordPress site is one of them. You got unupdated un software on there. Or maybe a user on there that left six months ago and still has access. And these are vulnerabilities. So if you remember, when you have assets and threats and vulnerabilities, what does that give us? Risk. Now, you also look at things like how much it matters, the probability of it happening. But what it really comes down to is you want to manage that risk. Because if you don't, these things happen. Um, education in the wider uh, security world doesn't have a very good reputation. Uh, I've looked at some, some reports out there. Verizon has a, a breach report. Uh, Symantec puts out a report. And education is fairly typically in the top three of industries for bad stuff happening. Um, could just be because there's a lot of it out there. But um, sometimes it's because in education, we trust people, right? You're about sharing information, not hoarding it. So it's, it's a little bit easy to, to kind of overlook some things that really super paranoid people um, you know, don't, don't want don't to happen. Um, those assets and those threats and those vulnerabilities are not only IT things. So why do we think that it's IT's responsibility only to do security? It's not. And like I said, security is about managing that risk. So we need a strategy to do that with. Um, it's easy to stand up here and say, but when you sit down and you got the whirlwind going on and work, you, you kind of need a plan. Um, that's, that's my background with the Air Force. You need strategies and plans. So where do we get such a strategy? We can come up with something. Or if you've, if you've ever been around the government and you guys in public uh, universities know what I'm talking about, government's here to help, right? This is what the second biggest lie in the English language. <laughs> the first is we're glad to have you. But in this case, actually, there is something useful. The National Institute of Standards and Technology was commissioned in 2013 by President Obama to come up with a framework for really critical infrastructure is what it started with. But what they've done is come up with a framework that all institutions, um, all industries can use. It's, it was built with uh, academia and business and the government. It was meant to be flexible. It's meant to be used by different structures and by different sizes of organizations. They use best practice guidelines and it's meant to help organizations manage that risk. And there's, there's three main pieces to it. What we're really gonna talk about today is the core, but what, uh, what the other pieces are is step two in this is how you measure your cybersecurity. So there's a a lot of different uh, frameworks and things that you can do. There's resources for how you measure how well you're doing at something. But what we want to focus on today is the core. These are the things that, that you can do. There's technical things in there. There's also managerial things in here that you can do. These are um, considered a set of outcomes, I say, that you want to make sure that what you're doing is secure. It looks like kind of a sequential process, and security, unfortunately, isn't you know, one, two, three, four, five, I'm done. It's, it's an ongoing process. I actually kind of think of this as a, as a lens. If you look at it a little bit, it looks kind of like a camera lens. If you look through this lens and you're doing all these things, you got a pretty good chance of being secure. So I'm going to go through it very quick. Just saw the, uh, the five main functions here. They, they are the, the kind of high level. This is where you're going to talk to, you know, a CEO or the, you know, the president at this level. It's broken down into some other outcomes. Um, these may look a little more familiar to technical guys, your asset management, uh, but you also talk about risk management. And those aren't just IT things. Those are the things that your leadership is talking about. They break it down a little bit further. You get into specific activities. And there are 108 of these the last time I looked at the document. 
and they use references. These are those best practices things. There's lots of smart folks out there. This was a collaboration where they brought all these things together to build it up into, the, into these five core things. And we're not gonna talk about the whole 108 of those things because that would be super boring. And, and, and nobody really needs to do that. And CISO probably needs to do that and go through 108 of those things. But what we're gonna do today is kind of tell a story about, could be one of you, on how you can use this to secure the little piece that you're responsible for in your WordPress site. So, Wellman University decided to migrate to WordPress because WordPress is cool. Yes, <laughs> awesome. So, here's Ed. And Ed works in the advising department at Wellman University. And he volunteered to be the site administrator for advising. And you can see how happy he is about it, right? So, Ed believes in teamwork. So, he sat down you know, with his team, his advisors, you know, some other folks out there to say, hey, I want, I want this website to be great. I want it to be useful. You know, maybe even talk to some students. He talked to the IT department because, you know, they run that WordPress thing and he needed to know what, what he had, what functionality he could have, and what kind of things he could do. All right. Ed heard a story about a university game he had. And he's like, well, I think that's really IT. But then I, I, I heard this presentation, something about a cybersecurity framework or cybersecurity, or maybe his wife told him, you know, hey, it's not just IT. So he decided he's going to look at the cybersecurity framework and use that to help manage his risk. All right, so identify. What are kind of the things that, that Ed needs to think about? Um, WordPress is there. It's there. It's the files, the database. He just needs to know how to use it. Those plugins and extensions and things, he, he might want to plug in, you know, he read about a cool one, he wants it on there. But really, WordPress is, is kind of more than just that, and security of WordPress is more than just securing those files and things. It's all the pieces that go together. And one of the big things with that is, is the users. Users in the roles. And Ed is responsible for that. IT doesn't know who's supposed to have a role in that website. He can do that. But he needs to think about it because, okay, you know, he got it. he's the administrator, but he probably has some advisors or maybe some student workers that help keep content on that website. And do they all need admin accounts? No, probably not. They probably need to be contributors. Um, how do they access it? You know, do they, does anybody work from home? Do they have, you know, a single sign-on? And perhaps they went to a conference and logged into the, the VPN and how they access that website. Um, and also, needs to prioritize what's important. Um, websites for information, and, you know, if, if it goes down, it's, it's probably bad. They can, you know, call somebody and they'll get it back up. What if that website goes down for advising in its registration time? That's probably not a good thing. Um, he needs to have the survey up there and the form up there where they're getting information from the students. That can go down uh, during registration week. So he's, he's prioritizing the things that are important. Another piece of identify is actually governance. What security policies do you have? Your universe probably has some. Um, do you need something special for, for your particular area? And you may or may not. Um, again, it depends. You know, if you've got student workers or people who are just just accessing your site and putting content, you might want some rules for them to follow. Um, you may have some legal and regulatory requirements that you that you have to follow. You should know what those are. That should be part of your identify function. And then we look into risk assessment, um, threats and vulnerabilities. Now, yeah, that's where you know Ed needs to go talk to the IT department. They're going to know what those are. And how, you know, how, does he, how does he know that? He's probably getting notifications from IT. My tech guys out there, I know you're, you're probably logged in. So I, I know I look at the vulnerability database. I actually am uh, subscribed to US CERT, so I get that stuff. You get, um, get notifications all the time from you know, update your Adobe or your Microsoft, or you, you got an iPhone, you get the little red bubble on your phone, update that. Those are all kind of Threat intelligence, they're, they're things that you get to tell you 
what's going on bad in the world and, and to give you an idea of action that you take. Because that takes us into protect and talk to kind of about the managing the users and the roles. Um, when you're thinking about that, not just who needs it, but when they need that access. You got somebody new come in, what is your process for adding them? Or when they leave, what's your process for deleting them? Um, especially if you've got something like a single sign-on where you may have somebody who needs that access for other things and you don't know that they can still get in to your website and they don't have any business being in there anymore. You gotta make sure that you're watching for um, getting rid of that. I know it was a big problem when I was in the Air Force. We had every so often we had to do a scrub and you'd find like 1,500 people who had access to the network who didn't need it anymore. Um, passwords. Most of you probably have something like a single sign-on in your university um, and got a password policy and they make you have like a long, you know, password, 28 characters, none can be the same and, you know, it can't be anything you've ever used in the last 10 years. But th there's actually a reason for that. Um, hopefully they've got something that makes it a little bit easier for you. University may have rolled out two-factor authentication and everybody went, oh, really? But it's not that bad and it is something, pa passwords just don't cut it anymore. You have the most strong password in the entire world and when it gets breached, it's out there in the dark web and somebody's buying it. So it doesn't matter. Um, you need something else. And that's what two-factor authentication does for you. Um, I know my connection with higher ed is my husband works in higher ed, so he gets a lot of free advice. And uh, they, just put, they just put out two-factor authentication. He whined, oh, and I'm like, it's not that bad. Come on, let's, you know. Went and set it up, and he got it, and it's on his phone. It's, they use Duo. It put, gives him a little push. He's like, oh, 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 this isn't so bad. So, yeah, sometimes it's, you can't force people to do something. You have to show how it, it's, it's good for them to do, and it can, in some cases, make their life easier and better. Um, for techie folks out there, you want to look at things like segmenting the network, um, remote access, have a VPN. Um, anybody in here log into the, uh, the VPN? You know, Lewis and Clark guest, right? Have a password on it? Yeah. No. Are, are we sure that's really a guest network and somebody just can set it up out, out there and we just gave everybody all our credentials? And Paul and I were just talking. You know, did you, did you give to, to, to Free Geek? Click on that link and give them your credit card number using this VPN? Hopefully not. These are the kind of things you, you do need to think about when you're protecting. You're protecting yourself, and that's the thing you need to do to protect your website as well. Update everything. Probably if you're a site owner, you're not responsible for updating. The IT department's doing that, but uh, I talked to somebody last night, and I think it depends on your university. So if you are responsible for it, make sure it gets updated. Um, backups. Now, IT department probably does backups. But if your site goes down or you lose a file, how do you get it? Call IT. How long is it going to take to get that? Uh, I'll tell you a little story. When a uh, oh, number of years ago, when young know, Captain Clements, well, the wing commander accidentally deleted something. And going through the entire backup tapes for everything to get the wing commander's file is not a fun thing to do. And you need to make sure you, need, you really need to talk to your IT department on this, on those backups, and make sure you can get that, and make sure they're testing and that you've tested your ability to get your stuff back. Because another story, also young Captain Clements, who was kind of dumb. <laughs> but, uh, well, not really, you know, but. But uh, anybody, I don't know if any of you guys are old enough to remember the I Love You virus back uh, a few years ago, and took down our email servers. Okay, got it, cleaned it, put up the backups, and then here came the sergeant, uh, uh, Captain, the backup tapes are corrupted. And that's a really bad day, and that's a bad day. So I hammer backup, 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 and test because a, test, a non tested backup is not a backup. That goes into the next bit, which is developing a plan. 
because you can have all these things, do them, but if you don't have a plan and you don't test and exercise that plan, when something bad happens, there you are, you, it's, it's, it's just not good. It, you're always going to have things go wrong and, and you're not going to have a plan and then it's going to go exactly right. But if, if you have a plan, you have at least somewhere to start and then you have a point of departure, you're not just flailing, um, not having any idea what to do. Um, you, you don't test your plan, and part of your plan is you call Bob in you know, the uh, you know, IT department, and Bob left six months ago, and you don't know, and nobody answers Bob's phone. Your, your plan isn't any good, and now you're running around trying to figure out the right, the right person. So, so have those plans and, uh, and test them every once in a while. A little bit more on arm protection. Um, you probably got and may have USB device policies. Um, just just make sure your folks are following it. Um, you know, they need to update media to the website. And they you know they're not plugging in the USB they found in the parking lot to uh, to, to put their, their photos on there. Uh, antivirus malware scanning should be should be common things, but but make sure if your folks are updating that website from from home or home computer or their phone that they've got that malware stuff on, on there as well because, you know, a student worker may be really good at using their phone and they put in the, you know, access the website to do their update. If they got malware on that phone, they've got a problem. Um, don't forget about physical protection as well. We just, uh, we just actually just had a lightning storm and I was working on my slides earlier this week and poof, the power went out. Um, fortunately, I was plugged into the UPS, which had surge protection, but um, yeah, you, you'll lose stuff just as bad from uh, nature as you will from a bad guy getting in and stealing it. And remember to change default credentials on anything you have. Um, again, maybe maybe a little bit more for, for the IT folks, but if you are using stuff or you're accessing your university network from home and you still have, you know, admin, admin on your Wi-Fi router, that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> There was a thing several several months ago where actually routers were a were being hacked and used as a as a part of a bot botnet. So kind of kind of think about all those things. That's the attack surface that you heard about this morning. There's a lot of different pieces just you got to think about and protect. Yeah, this this is not a good way to do uh, password management, sticking it on the wrong. <laughs> Unless you work at home like me and it's just my office. All right, and finally. Um, Part of protection is being aware and, and training. And training is boring, and security training is extra boring. But just take a little time to get you know the sound bites for for things. Hey, have you thought about this? And you know, some unfortunately sometimes you got to hammer things home. It's what did I read? It takes I know for sales it takes seven touches before somebody's going to buy something. Or maybe it takes seven times of hammering it into somebody's head before they'll they'll get the, uh, the security point. Make sure everybody who's got a piece understands that as well. All right, detection. Protection is great, but protection doesn't do everything. You got to know um, how to know when something goes wrong. And a lot of these are IT network stuff, the scans and the logs. Um, what what Ed needs to know is when something doesn't quite look right. Uh, I really liked the comment this morning about the. Uh, the branding uh, manager at the university being somebody you need to know because that helps with security because something didn't look quite right. Maybe I shouldn't check, you know, click on that that email. Those are the kind of kind of things that Ed and you guys and all of us can be. Where the, the every soldier is censured is what they used to call that in the army. Everybody keeping an eye out, you know, see something, say something. This is one of the most important things that we can do. Yeah, you know, the website's asking you for your social and your mother's name, name you know, maybe, maybe think about it before you, before you put that in. All right, um, got all these detection things going on and, and maybe your IT people, maybe you're getting some notifications too. Uh, but one of the things you do have to realize is who, who's actually taking action. I know where you know I, I do some security for, for my business clients and I get tons of little emails, you know, this got changed, that got changed. And what happens when you get floods and floods of those emails? Delete, 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 delete. <laughs> yeah. Most 
uh, business security breaches, and I have to think it's the same with the universities, although they don't sometimes get all the information. It isn't because people weren't doing stuff or they didn't have detection processes in place. It's that they had so much that they missed that one. And so one of the things you got to do, that's, that's part of managing and balancing that risk. What's the most important things? Because you, you know, if you miss one that's not as important, not that bad. But if you miss a very important notification because you have floods of everything going on, it's as bad as not having any detection at all. And sometimes, no matter what you do, bad stuff happens. So what do you do? Remember that plan, that response plan that you put together back a couple of steps ago? Execute it. What do you need to do right now today to put that fire out? Probably unplug the computer. <laughs> Disconnect from the network. That's the, that's the first thing. Um, actually, not unplug, let me say, because you want to you keep the, the logs for the like super smart security guys, the guys who are sitting over here on this side of the room, because they can use that to help figure out what, what went wrong. But, but if you can, get it off of the network. Um, dis disconnect it. Um, tell people. Uh, you, you've got those legal requirements that you've got to do, and you, you know, bad news doesn't get better with age, so make your notifications. Figure out what happened. Um, get your team together, because this is going to be some IT people, but there may be some other folks. You want to you get a team together, determine what happened, um, what's the impact, and what are you going to do about those notifications. And then finally, you want to recover. Get your data back from that backup that you took and you tested, because you did that. Um, communicate what's going on. Uh, this, is, this is something I teach with, with my business clients, but I think it's also important for a university, because if your university gets on the news and somebody's thinking about sending their kid, get, kid there, you're like, well, eh, maybe I'll take it this other place, because I don't know if University X really cares if they don't protect the data very well, and I don't want to. You know, I don't want to risk my, my, you know, my young men you know, out there and having their social security none and their credit ruined for life, um, which wouldn't happen. But you know how the media is sometimes, and they can, they can do things, and it and it could be. I mean, it's it's important to to protect that. But you got to communicate. Bad stuff's going to happen. But if you tell people what's going on, what you did, what you're going to do to fix it, that's the best way to kind of get your reputation better. Make it, you know, make people trust you. People will understand. That, that things do happen, but if you try to hide it, they'll never trust you. Um, if you tell them what you're doing to fix it, you're much more likely to uh, do well. And finally, recovering isn't just getting back to where you were. Um, if something happened, you probably, you know, could have just been bad luck, but you might have had a, a process that you need to tighten up, or, you know, maybe somebody left, or, you, you know, you, you have a, a vulnerability that you didn't fix. So you need to, to do what in the military we call the hot wash. And it's where you, you know, everybody sits together, figure out what went wrong, what you didn't do so well, and what you did do well, and, and document those. Um, call it lessons learned. And a lot of times lessons learned went in the round file. Don't do that. Um, you know, you, use, use this to... Uh, you know, tighten, tighten your stuff up and make it better. It doesn't have to be a long and drawn out thing. It, it could really be a quick. Uh, I have found the most effective ones to literally be standing there for 15 minutes. What went good? What went good? What went good? What went bad? What went bad? Write it down. Put it in your plan and, and do better next time. All right. So there's some building blocks for you, and that's still a lot of work. I mean, it's not the 108, all the things, but that, that's a lot of work to kind of go through and think about that. Um, so I encourage you to, to, to take that back and kind of talk to your team and, and uh, put together those, those plans. But if you don't have time and the things you need to do, like right, right now, and I encourage everybody to do this, like I said, in their personal life as well as, as your business life. Um, so what I call the subset, and there's three things that are the most important in my opinion. And it's, the first one is, the S is secure the access. Um, if you leave a door open to your house, anybody can get in, you might as well just give, give all your stuff away. This is one of the most important things you can do. 
It's use those passwords and multi-factor authentication to make sure that you're protecting the, the access to your important data. Update stuff. The reason updates come out, or you know, for two reasons really, they're either security updates or they're functionality updates. Um, sometimes you can tell, and there's uh, things that will say, this is for a security reason, or this gives you fancy new features. If you know, you know, you don't need the fancy new features right away and it's gonna cause you a lot of trouble, maybe you don't need to update that one right away. But if there's a security issue, you really need to do it. Um, pe people will find the, the hole quicker than we can plug them. Uh, that's what zero day exploits are about. Somebody's found a hole before anybody else got a chance to, to stop it. So when you get a security update, it's probably already somebody's being affected by it. So get it updated quickly and have a schedule, have a review for when you do that. Um, never, not everything is as obvious as a little red bubble on your iPhone saying update now. Uh, routers, in particular, there's firmware for things, have a, have a process to go through and, you know, check those every so often to make sure that you're, you are getting the updates done. And finally, of course, the backups. Uh, again, you, you may not have in your particular thing, if you're working in advising, um, the ability to do the backups, but make sure you know that they're being done and how you can access them and that they're being tested and that you can get what's important to you back if something bad happens. All right, so there are the takeaways for you. Um, remember that you can learn things, but if you don't do them, it's not, it doesn't do you any good to, to have knowledge if you don't execute it. Uh, I believe now we will have time for questions um, either here or you can put them on the website. Uh, I do encourage you to give feedback for this session if you liked it and I have all the other ones I've already given some myself. Um, it's important. I know um, WP Campus uses that to kind of figure out what, what people are interested in so they know um, who to have back for next time. And if you would like to connect with me, there is my information up there. You can find me on LinkedIn or Twitter and, and uh, also my website. Thank you very much. Questions?